Nobody wants to invest in an average area. Everyone wants to invest in the best area. But where are the best areas to invest in 2021? Well, don't worry. In this episode, we'll be revealing our top property investment hotspots for this year. Welcome to the Property Podcast, where every Thursday, property investors come to be informed and inspired. We're coming up to the end of January already, believe it or not, or maybe it feels like a really long January. I'm not sure. Time's gone a bit weird. But hopefully you've got expanding your property portfolio on your list of resolutions, and hopefully you haven't forgotten about those resolutions. But if you don't know where that's going to be yet, well, we're here this week to help you out. So it's time for our news story now. And this week's news story comes from Rightmove and a very interesting headline. Housing market sees busiest ever start to a year. Busiest ever. So I know we've got a stamp duty holiday, but that still, Rob, is very, very impressive. It is. And I like this Rightmove data because it gives you insight from the very start of the process when people are browsing for property and contacting agents rather than having to wait for things like mortgage approvals and sales figures down the line. So Rightmove are saying that visits to their website are up 30% on the same time last year, which is a lot, isn't it? And they also measure people who are contacting estate agents through the site. They say those inquiring about property to buy is 11% higher than last year. And good news for anyone trying to rent out a property at the moment, those inquiring about a property to rent is up by 22%. So the question, of course, Rob, is what's driving this? Because if it's people trying to beat the stamp duty holiday, then they could be disappointed because I'd imagine most transactions won't go through in time. But if people are aware of that and they're actually looking to move for other reasons, then it's very encouraging sign for activity continuing beyond April. It's weird as well because obviously as we record this we're in lockdown and this period recorded was in lockdown as well. So then you could possibly attribute the website hits being up to people just dreaming, you know, looking at escaping where they are and going to different places. I've been one of those. You want to see the amount of houses I've bought in my head over the last few weeks. But the fact that inquiries are up as well suggests that this is more than just people being curious or dreaming like I've been. So although it's very early days and it is very early days, this is an encouraging sign that maybe, just maybe, that beyond the stamp duty holiday, demand will continue. And an active property market after a a weird year last year is no bad thing. If transactions can go up, then that's a healthy thing. You know, not everyone agrees with property prices going up, but transactions increasing, in most people's eyes, is a good thing. It's only a snapshot of the first few weeks into January, but of course, we'll keep you informed. And next week, join us for the market update, where we'll be bringing you stories like this and many more to give you a real insight to what's happening in the property market right now. Before we get going, a thank you. And a thank you to you and to your fellow listener for supporting us. And supporting with what you may ask, well, that's because you support so much, of course, but it's with the new podcast, the Any Other Business podcast. The feedback has been fantastic. In fact, it's actually been my favourite part of launching a new podcast. Thank you so much for all the lovely, kind comments, whether it's been via YouTube reviews, whether it's iTunes reviews, the emails you've sent in, the messages on socials. It's been so, so nice. So thank you. Thank you so much. It it means a lot. It it was a risk doing this podcast, as you can probably tell by the content we've put out. And for it to be so well supported, I don't think we should be surprised, but it's not expected. And it is greatly appreciated. Yeah, the reaction has been superb. So thank you. If you haven't subscribed yet, then sort that out right now. Just go search any other business on wherever you listen to your podcasts. Or if you'd rather watch us, you can do the same thing on YouTube because there is a new episode out every Friday. The episode that's coming out tomorrow is based around a questionnaire that Rob and I did back when we first met, before we went into business together. And we're going back and looking at that for the first time in, what, eight years in the episode. And I can honestly say I've never seen Rob be as nervous as he was at the start of filming this episode. So it's very much worth a watch or a listen. So make sure you're subscribed to any other business. Like I said, you can go search for it or you can go to aob.show where you can find all the links in one place. That's aob.show. Every year on the podcast at around this time, we highlight our hotspots for the year ahead. These are what we believe are strong areas to get into in the year ahead. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that these are the only areas that you should be investing in in 2021. It also doesn't mean that any investment in one of these areas is going to be a good one. It's far more important to do your research, get to know your areas in detail and make the right investment at the right price wherever it is. 
But if you want to give yourself a bit of a tailwind, it makes sense to make your investment in an area that seems likely to perform strongly in the year ahead. This year, we've picked out four locations that we believe are pretty safe bets, uncontroversial. But we've also picked out another four that we'd not say were more risky, but where we have less certainty about how they're going to perform this year. We believe in all these areas, but if you went in this year, you could consider it getting in early. So Rob, let's start out safe with our first hotspot for 2021. So first on our list is Nottingham. We've been talking about Nottingham for a few years now. We've become big fans. Rob, in particular, you've been a big fan for a long time. You started investing in Nottingham a few years back before anyone was talking about it. But you've continued and you invested again last year. And that's for good reason. Nottingham has so much going for it. Great universities, fantastic employment, wonderful transport links geographically well-placed, and much more means that everyone should be talking about Nottingham, especially with the prices being at where they're at right now, way below the likes of Manchester and Birmingham. But Rob, in our eyes, in many respects, just as strong as those areas. Definitely. And Nottingham had a really good year last year. We had it at our hotspots for 2020. And based on the latest home track data that we've got at the time of recording, actually had higher capital growth than anywhere else over the last 12 months. So we were right to include it last year. And confident including it again this year because I believe it has still got a lot further to go. Like you said, the average price is still well below some of the other cities that are up there and still feels like a bit of a secret. I think there'll be more investors heading that way. So very confident that Nottingham will continue to do well in 2021. The next city on our list is Liverpool. Again, it had a very good 2020, comfortably in the top five cities in England for capital growth. But again, we have to include it. Because all the factors for Liverpool doing well last year are still in place, the average price is still so much lower than some of its neighbours, including notably Manchester. So it's certainly not too late to get in on Liverpool. However, and I'll leave you to talk about this, Rob, because it's safer for you to criticise it than I am as you're from there, but you do have to be a little bit careful in Liverpool as well. You do. There are some schemes in Liverpool targeted at investors that are potentially risky. There are numerous schemes that literally haven't got off the ground in Liverpool. There are other schemes where deposits that are being put down at an off-plan stage are appearing to be protected, but actually, if you dig deep, they're not. So be very cautious if you invest in Liverpool. There are some good new build sites, but if you don't know what you're doing and you're not an experienced investor, then maybe stick to the second-hand stock market. There's plenty to go at, and don't let us put you off with what we've said, but just be cautious. Liverpool is a fantastic city, and it's got great potential. Affordability for those looking to buy and rent in the city is great. We've so much going for it, it absolutely has to make our top four. And another city that has to make our top four, and has featured in our Hotspots episodes in previous years, is Leeds. But again, Rob, for similar reasons to the previous two. Leeds has done well recently. Again, a top five city in 2020 for capital growth. But we started to talk about Leeds and the previous two before the capital growth came along. And we believe, like with the previous two cities, it's still got a long way to go. Yeah, I know. So far, so boring. We have had all these picks before, but this isn't about pure entertainment value. This is about highlighting strong areas to invest. And those don't necessarily change year to year. There will be points where it's time to stop investing in an area. And there'll be times when new ones come onto the radar. And we're going to have some of those later on. But Leeds is another strong pick. The pace of growth in Leeds picked up in 2020, and I think it's well-placed to sustain it. When you look at the price trends, it seems like prices have further to go. And also all the factors that have led to that growth in Leeds are still in place. There is so much inward investment into Leeds, so many jobs being created, so many employers moving in, and that is underpinning that growth. It's very diversified as well. So it's not like it's one of those cities where there's one big industry or one big employer or one big university. There's a real mix in Leeds. So it's always going to be a pretty safe bet. But I think in 2021, it's set up to have another particularly good year. And fourth on our safe bets list is not a city at all. It's actually a region and it's Greater Manchester. Now, Manchester City Centre is an area that we've championed for a number of years, and we still think it's a great place to invest. If you do invest in the city centre, just make sure that you're investing in something unique, something different, or that you're getting a particularly strong deal. Because actually, the ripple effect now taking place into Greater Manchester is also appealing. And that's why we've picked Greater Manchester, not the city centre, to make up our top four. Now, Greater Manchester is huge. From Stockport to Bolton to Wigan to Rochdale, there are so many areas to look at and consider. And of course, not all areas are going to be created equal. 
But like we've seen with London in the past, there's a ripple effect after a city's done particularly well and then the surrounding regions have done well. We fully expect that to happen in Greater Manchester as well. And in fact, there is evidence to show that it's already happening. Now, when you think of a a ripple effect, you're not going into necessarily rural areas. Some of these areas are major towns. Salford, for example, is a city. So there's lots to look at here. But if it's an area that's unfamiliar to you, do your research. Don't just start piling in just because we've mentioned it. It's a big area and the difference between the best areas in Greater Manchester and how they perform versus the worst is going to be quite noticeable. So investing anywhere doesn't mean huge success. But we do believe it's got huge potential. Yeah, a classic ripple effect play, like you say, Rob. And I was looking just the other day at parts of Salford and how far they've moved over the last few years. Salford, because of its location and its transport linked, and of course, what's going on in Salford itself, first in line for that ripple effect. But that ripple is going to continue out further. So there'll be plenty of places in Greater Manchester offering good value right now. So those are our four safe bets. Nottingham, Liverpool, Leeds and Greater Manchester. Not much in the way of excitement, nothing new. We've talked about all these areas before, but success in investing isn't necessarily about being really clever or being the only one to spot something. You can just find trends that are already in motion and capitalise on them. And those trends, as we've said, still have a long way to go. We have, though, picked four other areas that are perhaps slightly more surprising mentions. And the first on this list, Rob, is probably the most surprising of them all home counties yeah we're really mixing it up this year so for years now we've talked about how london and the southeast have really been suffering when compared to the rest of the uk for property prices and rental returns so why are we picking the home counties the areas that surround london well for good reason now last year we had a change well in fact we had loads of changes it was a very turbulent year But one of the changing trends that we saw was that people living in some cities wanted to live outside those cities and they wanted a little bit more space. What's interesting is this doesn't seem to apply to every city, but there has been, to some level, a bit of a migration away from London. Now, to what level that goes to, who knows? So this year's hotspot of the home counties is not one we necessarily expect to see for years and years to come. It could be a one-year deal type of thing. But the market already in the home counties is very strong, very strong. And that really kicked off when the stamp duty changes were announced by the government last year. How long this trend will continue for, who knows? But at the moment, if something is priced well and it comes on the market, it goes. And that's at all price ranges, from the areas where you get a bit more value to areas where property prices are seven figures plus. Everything is going. Now, this may end soon, but regardless, I think when we look back at the figures of 2021 and we see which cities and regions have performed well, that the home counties will certainly be in the top half. And as a region, maybe even in the top five. So because of the trend we're seeing, a very different pick for us this year, Rob. It could be absolutely bonkers, and that's why it's in our second four and kind of our riskier part of the list. But there's enough stacking up for us to include it and for people to look at it seriously. Yeah, I think the risk with this one is that the trend peters out early in the year, which is possible. So the stamp duty holiday ends. Maybe all the people who want to be moving further out of London for more space have done so. Maybe people are getting back to work and going, oh, actually, I'm having to go to the office more than I thought. It's possible that this won't last, but we just don't know how sustainable that trend is going to be. But it's still going to be a very interesting one to keep an eye on. And we're talking about how little certain things have changed, but it's amazing how much can change in a year as well. Next in our ones to watch is Sheffield, which made our ones to watch last year as well. Sheffield I'd characterise as a city with a lot of potential that hasn't been fully realised yet. And it's actually got quite a bit in common with Nottingham as well, in that it's got a strong economy, it's quite well diversified, it's got a couple of big universities, and it's also somewhere that a lot of investors haven't noticed yet. Prices in Sheffield are low. And if you look at the growth that Sheffield's had in recent years, it's been consistently fine, but it hasn't really kicked on yet in the way that the likes of Manchester and Liverpool and even Nottingham have done. The reason that this is still only a one to watch, Rob, is I still don't think this is going to be the year that Sheffield breaks out, but it feels like a safe one to get into for future growth. I completely agree, Rob. I don't think we're going to see anything remarkable from Sheffield in 2021. So people could say, oh, why is it on your list? But for that very reason you've just mentioned, we think it once it goes, it'll do very well. So if you're in early, early, then you're in line to do the best. And remember, it's not that Sheffield hasn't had any growth. It's just not been as exciting as other areas. So you 
you still should do okay. Yields are strong as well, so you'll get a nice return while you're waiting. Now, no promises. Don't come back to us in five years and go, what happened to Sheffield? But we really do believe in the area, and it's an area that we will be targeting for our investors. So while it's in our ones to watch list, for us it'll be in our ones we're taking action in list. Next on our list absolutely fits the wildcard category. It's an area that we've never mentioned before. So it's a first again on our hotspots list. But actually, like Sheffield, when you look at the case for capital growth here, there's so much supporting future growth that we need to start talking about it, Rob. I'm going to please a few people here because we're naming somewhere outside of England and we're naming Belfast. Yeah, I'm slightly annoyed with myself, but not too much. Because I started noticing Belfast in around about 2015 because the fall that it's had from its peak is absolutely enormous. Things got very carried away in the last boom. The crash was huge. But by 2015, it seemed like it had hit the bottom and was starting to come back a little bit. I spoke to a few people about this, then didn't do anything with this information. And since then, prices have consistently grown. But I'm not too annoyed because the growth has just been steady. It's been very much mid-table, pretty much in line with the UK average. So you would have outperformed Belfast by investing in any of the other areas that we've talked about so far. But I do believe because it's fallen so hard and it's coming back so slowly, its growth potential is still very high. And the prices in Belfast are unbelievably low. I've actually got a friend who's from there originally and they're looking at moving back and they're showing me the price of a lovely three bedroom detached house that they were looking at in a reasonably central suburb and I couldn't believe the price of it. Now clearly a tiny bit of data and one anecdote is not enough to base an investment case around but it's got to be hard to argue Rob that there's not a lot of upside there. I think it's going to be very hard to argue. Belfast reminds me a lot of Liverpool as well. Lots of regen into the city. A lot of people from the city believe in its city as well. I think which is a good thing. I think Sheffield that we've mentioned, I think there's a lack of belief within the city itself or certainly by the people running it. Sheffield is underperforming, whereas Liverpool and Belfast, as cities, they seem to believe in themselves and that's been reflected in the ambition of those cities and what they're trying to do. So the property prices being as low as they are and still so far off the past peak. You know, Most cities are now beyond the past peak. It's taken a long time for a lot of cities to get there, but most of them are. Whereas Belfast has still got quite a way to go. So Belfast, for its affordability, for its investment into the region, for the belief that the city has within itself, the fact that it's a well-famous city, so much going for it that I think Belfast is one that we categorise as a wild card today, but in the not-too-distant future, we'll be calling it a safe bet. And finally on our list, another new entry, another city that you've not heard us talk about before, and it's Derby. And we're calling this list wildcards, but actually, there's a lot of common sense applied to all of these regions. There's a good case for Sheffield, Belfast, and the home counties. While it may seem wild to everyone else, because no one else is really predicting these areas, there's a strong investment case for investing in all the areas, and that absolutely stands for Derby. Derby has got a lot going for it. Again, geographically well-placed. It's got a lot in common with Nottingham. The fact that it's not too far away from Nottingham helps that comparison. But it's a city that has not been talked about, has great employment, great fundamentals all round, but yet nobody is talking about it. Prices are low, and therefore returns are really strong. But here's where it gets really interesting. When you look at the areas with the highest wages in the UK, you have the usual suspects in the top 10, the places that you can name quite quickly. London, Reading, Oxford, Cambridge, Edinburgh, places you would expect. But also in that top 10 is Derby. Yep, Derby. Not many people would have picked Derby in the top 10 places for the average wage. But that's because it's got so many good employers there. So you've got great fundamentals, low prices compared to other cities in the UK, great returns, great employment, and yet no real capital growth. Well, for that reason, while it's in our wildcard section, like Sheffield, it's an area that we'll be focusing on in 2021 as a place to invest. Because, Robert, it almost seems a bit crazy that it hasn't started to perform with so much going for it. Yeah, it does. Um, I've been as guilty as anyone of overlooking it because many of the positive things we said about Nottingham, you can just cut and paste into Derby. And because of the location of some of the major employers around there, which support those high wages, those employees live in Nottingham and Derby. And again, we said that Nottingham until recently had felt like it was a bit overlooked. But even more so, we'd overlooked it. 
But I'm glad we're not overlooking it this year, because while I don't think it's going to start exhibiting the kind of growth that we're going to see in the top four areas that we've highlighted this year, it certainly seems like it's going to be a strong performer in the years ahead. So there you have it, our hotspots list for 2021, the areas that we think you should keep an eye out for, and for many of those areas, areas that we'll be looking to do deals in in 2021. So I know it's a bit counterintuitive to tell you the areas that we're going to be invested in, because that would, in a way, increase our competition, but there's plenty to go around. But remember, a word of caution, Rob's already said it, but to repeat... Just because we've listed these areas does not mean you should go in and invest blindly or do a little bit of research and pile in. It is so important, particularly when you're investing in an area that you don't know, that you spend a lot of time researching to make sure that your investment is a wise one. All of those areas that we mentioned, all of them without exception, have really great areas to invest and areas that you'd want to avoid. Until you do your research, you're not going to know where those areas are and where you should be investing. So if you are looking to invest somewhere different in 2021, we've given you the starting block, but now it's your turn to go on and do that extra research. And if you do decide to invest in some of these regions, do let us know and good luck. So hopefully you're going to be very successful this year and possibly successful in some of the areas that we've mentioned. And in this part of the show, we like to focus on the success that you have. Rob, I believe we've had a nice email in with somebody giving us an update on their impressive progress. We have. So if you haven't really got going this year yet and you want a bit of motivation, check this out. This is from Neil. Neil says, This last year, in my first year after retirement, I moved into property seriously. It's always been a hobby prior to retirement. So after listening to Property Hub and doing lots of research, ready to go after six months and confidence gained, in the last six months, I purchased eight properties and a freehold to a building where I now own two flats. Wow. I couldn't or wouldn't have done this without the Property Hub Podcasts, Magazine and Forum. Well, glad to have helped a little bit, Neil, but that's all you. That's incredible. That is is incredible. Wowzers. That's... um... That's quite impressive. Well done, Neil. And it's not exactly been the easiest of environments to invest in. There's great opportunities and a lot of people have switched off to them, but you clearly, clearly haven't. Fantastic. Well done. Now it's time for Hub Extra, that part of the show where we want to give you a bit more. We've not done enough yet. We just want to give you a little bit extra. And that, of course, is backed up by the wonderful Property Hub Extra email that goes out to all hubbers on a Friday. Don't get that email, you poor soul. Just go to propertyhub.net. You can sign up for free and take advantage of all the free resources that are available on the website. There are a load. And if that's not enough, you'll also get the Hub Extra email every Friday. And it's our mission to make it the most valuable email you receive each week. So Rob, what are our juicy offerings this week? Well, first of all, we need to highlight a YouTube video that we put out on this topic we've been talking about today, our top buy to let hotspots for 2021. Now, we've not given different hotspots on the video. That would be weird, but we have covered it in a slightly different way. So even though you've listened, you might want to go and check that one out as well. And there's some people contributing their own thoughts in the comments as well. So you can go check that one out on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search Property Hub UK. And also, Rob, we're not going to bang on about this endlessly, but we do need to remind people to check out any other business if they haven't already. Yeah, you may as well concede that (laughs) there's been a few mentions of it, but we are excited by it. And I think we're allowed to. It's our second podcast in eight years. So it's not like we're churning these things out every week. We're going to be excited by this. And we're glad so many of you are too. So like I said earlier in the show, thank you for your support. And if you've not subscribed yet, give it a try. I think you're going to love it. So that's us done for today, but you're not getting away from us for long because we'll be back tomorrow over on Any Other Business with that brand new episode that made Rob so nervous. And then next week, as always, we've got Ask Rob and Rob on Tuesday and then another fine episode of the Property Podcast next Thursday. So we'll look forward to seeing you then. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.